Hello and welcome back to Here We Tow. Today I'm at Broad Lane Leisure and I'm going to be reviewing this. It's the Swift Contiki Sport 599L. This version is also available in a standard 599, but this is the L, the difference being that you're going to get more of a payload on this motorhome and it has got a different layout in the lounge. So what do we need to know about the 599? Well, this is a large motorhome. It's eight meters and 11 centimeters in length. It's 2.3 meters in width and it's 2.8 meters in height. This motorhome, although it's on the Fiat Ducato cab, it is on the Alco chassis and it weighs in at 4,250 kilos on its gross vehicle mass. So you are going to need a C1 category on your driver's license to drive this motorhome. You won't be able to drive it on your B category. So as I said earlier about payload, this huge motorhome is going to give you a massive payload of 895 kilograms, which is massive. And I'll show you the rear garage as well to give you an idea of the storage that you're going to get. So Fiat Ducato, we've got the black cab, we've got a 2.3 litre diesel engine and it does use AdBlue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make my way down the near side and show you that first. Now this one is the 140 brake horsepower model with a and it, it comes in either a manual or an optional automatic and you can upgrade your brake horsepower from 140 to 160 if you like. So we'll venture down. Now as we can see prices start at just under 69,000 but realistically you're going to be looking at about 70,000 pounds for this motorhome. We have the black cab We've got 16 inch alloy wheels. We come down and then we see the decals. We've got the white coach built body and the black and a sort of slightly green color uh, decal there. We're going to find the filler for the diesel petrol tank. It's got a huge 90 liter tank, but it, it will also take 19 liters of Ad Blue. Now, first of all, we're going to find our place for our gas, and this is going to take two 13 kilogram gas bottles. So that's a really good size. That's a lot of gas. So if you're touring off grid or you're going to Europe, that is excellent. We're then going to find our first window that looks into the lounge. And as we go up, we see the two lay wind out canopy and you can see the length of this. It's four and a half meters long as this canopy. So it's literally going down the whole near side of the motorhome. And two lay, I, I particularly like that canopy. As we come down, we're going to get the one piece door. We've got a nice window and that does have a blind inside. The door opens out this way and it is on a hydraulic arm so it keeps it nice and supported so the wind doesn't take it from your hand. Further down, now we can see we've got Dometic vents here. This is for the Dometic tower fridge and freezer, which I'll show you inside. And above we've got an LED awning light, which will illuminate this space on an evening. Just below, we've got an external gas point, great for barbecuing. That's a Truma piece there. And next to it, we've got a 230 volt plug socket. So if you want to charge something like electric bikes or you've got an electric cooking stove, or you want to watch television if you're going to sit out here, anything like that, that's a really good practicality there. Moving across, we have our toilet cassette here. So that indicates we're, this is where we're going to find the toilet on the 599. And then we also get an external cold water shower. And that's really handy if you want to wash off your boots, your bikes, your dog, your children, yourself, whatever you want to do. So we've got all the kit on this motorhome, which is great to see for the price. So as we move further down, we're going to find one of the windows that goes into the uh, bedroom. And we'll see the bedroom again when we go in. It's got a beautiful island bed as this motorhome. It's a really nice layout. Now I alluded to the fact that it had a garage. A lot of the um, UK manufacturers, they don't have garages on motorhomes. However, due to the huge size of the Sport 599, we're going to find a garage and you can access this from both sides. If I lift up the hatch, we can see underneath. Now, 
Although the garage is really good in that it goes literally the full length, we can see how long that is. And there's several to anchor points in the garage as well. The only thing is it hasn't got the height because the bed we'll see inside is quite low. So we don't have the height on there. So you would have to consider that if you're trying to climb in, but you could lay pedal bikes down in there. You'll get all your kit. You could probably get kayaks and all sorts. So excellent space just not accessible in terms of height so bear that in mind if you're having to clamber in there but i do like to see a garage we'll venture around the back and we'll just take a look to see what we're getting back here so i'll see you around the back so here on the back end of the 599 it's a large one piece we've already got the pre-installation if you did want to fit a two-lay bike carrier we've got the reversing cameras as well, which play through in the cab, they're excellent, especially when you're reversing onto pitches or in tight spaces, because at 8.11 metres, this is a long motorhome. And we're also going to find reversing sensors as well. So uh, if you're in a tight spot, you're going to know about it. So this is the back end, and it's worth mentioning that although there's no tow bar fitted on this motorhome, you can fit a tow bar. This motorhome, it can tow up to two tonnes, but what you need to be mindful of is with the gross train weight of this, you will only be able to tow up to 1,750 kilograms. So that's just worth bearing in mind. It's also worth mentioning that up on the roof of the 599, we're going to find a 100 watt solar panel as standard and a television aerial as well. So what we'll do now is we'll venture off down the offside and see what we're going to find down here. So jumping onto the offside, we get the second garage door that I mentioned. So access at both sides, always a bonus. We get another window going into the lounge. We come down. Now this is where we're going to find our electric hookup point there. So nice and easy to access. And under here, unfortunately, it's locked at the moment, but this will slide out and it's almost like a tray. So this is where we're probably going to keep things that we want easily accessible, like our electric cable and bits and pieces like that. And then we have additional storage here as well. So we've certainly got plenty of storage on the 599. We notice here we've got the external vent for the Alder and this has got Alder wet central heating which I'd certainly want to be seeing at that £70,000 uh, price point. So Alder is standard and then we're going to hook up our water here. This is where we'll open the cap, fill our water tank and we also have a 12 volt plug here as well for if you're wanting to fill with an aqua roll or something like that. It's worth mentioning that on the 599, we've got a reasonably good size uh, fresh water tank at 90 litres, and we've got a waste water tank of 68 litres. So they're good numbers for if you're off grid for a few days. And then last but not least, we'll just come down and we find obviously the door into the driver's side for the motorhome and that sums up the offside really so externally it is a nice looking motorhome what we'll do now is we'll jump inside and see what we all want to see and that's what it looks like in there so i'll see you inside so inside the 599 now as i say this is the l version the lounge this has four berths but it only has two seats if you went for the 599 not the L version, you get four berths and you get four travel seats as well. So internally, as I say, 8.11 metres, we're going to get plenty of space inside and at 2.3 wide, we get a lovely feeling of space. And what I really like is the great big sunroof up above that lets plenty of light in as well into this cab area. So it makes it feel very light and bright. Now this is the automatic version. This has a nine speed auto fitted to it. And as I say, you can have the 140 or the 160 engine. So we're going to get our two captain's chairs. Now the fabric, it's a suede type fabric with a more standard hard wearing fabric. We're going to get some scatter cushions. These have a purple tinge to them for 2021. 
and it's pretty standard uh, as a, it has that general swift feel to it. We're going to up front get a steering wheel with other controls on it. We're going to get various features up here as well, including uh, aircon in the cab area. Now, as I move down, we'll look at this lounge area and this is where we see the 599L and we've got almost what I'd call for me bench seats. So as we can see, we've got a seat here, a seat there and they face each other. And I quite like this layout. And then there is a table that's going to be able to set up here to eat at. The other style that doesn't have this has more of an L shape uh, seating area. So all the windows, we do have fly screens and blinds. And in the front of the cab, we're going to find the Remis blinds. So on a night time, when you want some privacy, you can obviously draw those. And the blinds around the motorhome are the concertina types. Again, I think most people do prefer these concertinas. I know I do, they're a little bit softer. Lighting around the Contiki Sport, we've got lights everywhere. There were lights up in the cab where I was sat. We've got little spotlights dotted around. There's little LEDs above me. So it seems very well illuminated. You only find out obviously on an evening time. Now, in terms of storage, now as you can see, headroom, reasonable headroom. Obviously you have to be careful if you're a little bit taller here. We do have the Kenwood speakers, and these are going to work alongside the Swift Command Center, which I'll come to. But we find we've got some nice locker space. Just have to be careful as we open these up. But nice locker space with the shelf units as well. And with that huge payload, 895 kilos, we don't have to overly worry about what we're taking with us. Now, the locker space is obviously the same on both sides, so we've got a nice amount of room here. Now, as we move back into the motorhome, we do step down onto the next level, so just be careful there. And this is where we're going to find, obviously, on the near side, our door where we come into the habitation area. And up above is where we're going to find Swift Command. Swift Command is basically the controller for the whole of the motorhome. Everything that you're going to want to operate, you'll be able to operate off this panel. Now, as you can see here, we've got pump, awning light, lighting, the power water, heating, settings and fridge. We do also have an Alder wet central heating control next to it. Although once this is all set up, you'll be able to just use your Swift command for that. It's also worth noting that the Contiki uh, Sport also comes as standard with a tracker as well, and that's fitted uh, within the system. So it's probably got you know, plenty of the bits you're going to want, really. So there we go, that's Swift Command, and that's this side of the motorhome. What we'll do now is we'll have a look over on the off side at the kitchen. So over on the off side, we have the kitchen. Now, one thing I do like is the great amount of worktop space that we're going to be getting. And there's also an additional flap here as well. So as long as someone's not sat there, flap up, loads of room. Good size sink. It's certainly got the width, width not overly deep. And we find a nice tap, which does have the swivel feature I've since learned since reviewing some recent Swifts. We do find we get two plug sockets, so you've got kettle, coffee machine and toaster. We've got a lovely splash back here and we do have a blind fitted as well. So coming up here in the kitchen, we're going to get a nice cupboard that opens up and we find we've got the sergeant there as well. Now within here, this is where we're going to find a rack for our plates and places for our, our cups or glasses. Really good size cupboard. The only thing again though, again maybe because I'm a little bit shorter at five foot four, but reaching in there is not overly easy. So if you put anything back there, you're probably not going to get to it again. So that's the, the only thing I'd just comment on in there. We do have additional lighting as well around the kitchen. Um, I haven't just switched that on just so you know. The microwave. Now we've got a microwave, um, reasonable size, it's certainly very deep. Um, it is ab above the oven, so just be careful if you have anything on the hob. Now as we come down under uh, this part of the uh, kitchen here, we're going to find 
an LED light which is going to illuminate under here. Unfortunately, one thing I found that there doesn't seem to be is it doesn't appear to be an extractor fan, which some motorhomes have. So that seems to be the only thing that, that is missing there. We've then got a really good size Thetford gas oven and grill. So absolutely huge inside. And what I do like is we've got an electric plate. So if you're on electric hookup, you can use that. And then we've got the three gas rings. So as I say, that is very good. And then moving down, what we do have is a separate gas grill and we've got the gas oven and that's at a fairly good height. Again, it's not too close to the floor. So a really nice uh, and good sized uh, Thetford gas oven and grill there. And then just underneath, we are going to have a little bit of additional storage. Not the easiest to get down to, but you can always keep uh, tins or pans or something like that in there. We then move around to this part of the kitchen and I do quite like these uh, under storage cupboards that Swift have. It's got the two doors that open out so you can see then got plenty of room in here. So one thing we do have, give that a pull, is the slide out cutlery tray. So we've got that there and that then goes back under there when we're not using it. And then there's various shelves there for bits and pieces. So fairly reasonable storage there. For, for a motorhome this size, it's a fairly good kitchen. Now, I'll turn now back to the near side of the motorhome. And what we're going to find first of all is a little storage cupboard there. Again, if you're short, you're not going to, to get much in and out of there. But this is also where the aerial comes in, the Vision Plus aerial, so you can see that there. So that's not going to affect you too much when you're using the motorhome. Above here, we do have a two-lay Omnister extractor fan, so you can switch that on to pull out some of the cooking smells from there. So that, that maybe makes up the fact we're not going to get the extractor here above the hob. So we've got that there, and that will suck air in and uh, bring and suck air out. So if it's a warm day, it's also useful if you want to create a bit of air circulation as well. So next we're going to look at the fridge and freezer and this is the Dometic, 133 litres altogether. If we open that up, we can see we've got plenty of shelves which will uh, be attached obviously when you're using your motorhome. Plenty of shelves, there's a nice salad tray in the bottom and we've got a reasonably sized, good sized um, freezer compartment as well. So for a couple then you've got absolutely loads of space in there. So this really summarises the first half of the motorhome. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start moving backwards and we'll have a look at the shower, the toilet washroom and the huge island bed at the back which I like. So let's make our way further back into the motorhome. So we've moved further back. This is the off side of the motorhome, obviously the front's down this end. So first of all, we can see here, we've got a good size separate shower cubicle. So it's not an all in one, which people often like. I must say, it is my preference to have a separate shower. It's a single plug hole. We do have a screen, a glazed screen that will pull round. There's a nice light within the shower. And yeah, it is generally a good size cubicle. There's some good headroom in there. I'd say even up to about six foot two, you'll be quite comfortable in there. Next, we're going to go and have a look at the toilet and washroom. And that's over here on the near side. Now, this has a door that opens and it'll then connect there to close that off. So it's going to close off the living space to the lounge area. We go in, we see we've got the Thetford swivel toilet. We've got a nice toilet roll holder. We've also got various hooks for putting our towels. We find a radiator in here for the Alder Wet Central heating. There's a fairly good sized sink with mirror, although if you're a gentleman shaving, you may find it a little bit restrictive. And then there's a shelf and there is a cupboard as well for our toiletries. 
So that is the toilet room in the 599. So let's carry on now and have a look at this lovely bedroom space. So what I'll do, so as we step in, I'll just start over here as I come in um, through this, this entrance way. Now here we're going to see, we've already got a pre-installation for if you wanted to put a television on a bracket here. And we've got a 12 volt and television aerial here and a plug socket. So you are going to be able to fit a television in the bedroom if that's what you want to do. And then on the opposite side, we're going to find this small worktop space where you could put uh, makeup or toiletries or bits. It's got two mirrors wrapped around. We've got a light switch. We've got another plug socket here. There's plenty of plug so sockets uh, in the Contiki, I've noticed. And we've got a little storage cupboard as well. So again, we're certainly not missing out on, on storage and plug sockets. So that's this corner here. What we'll do next is we'll take a further look around this bedroom space. So we move now right into the back of the bedroom and it's a rear island bed. Now this bed, it is huge. It's four foot five in width. And when you pull it out into its full position, it will be six feet and seven inches in length. So even the tallest person should be accommodated on this bed. And it's nice to see that it is the Duvalet mattress. These are absolutely superb of the Duvalets. They're about the, the top end of, of motor mattresses as you get. So it's a good size um, bedroom, obviously due to the length and width of the motorhome, there's plenty of space to move around it, which is always good. On this side, we're going to get a plug socket, light switch, and on the opposite side, there is a USB switch. So if you're wanting to charge gadgets and stuff in bed, that's not going to be a problem. There's some nice wardrobe space. As you can see here, it's a really good depth as well. And we find the, El the Alder header tank in there as well. So wardrobes on each side. And an upper head over, overhead here, we've got the lockers which again, a good depth, so plenty of storage for our clothes there, which is always nice to see. And we have some little USBs just under here, and we've also got some speakers as well, so you can play music back here in the bedroom. So this is a good space. We also find we've got a small hecky above the bed, and that's just going to let a bit of light in as well, and that does have a blind uh, for on an evening time. So that's the bedroom space. So what we'll do is we'll just head back into the lounge and just have a quick summary. So I'll see you back up there. So there we have it. That's the Swift Contiki Sport 599L. Hopefully you enjoyed having a look around it. As I say, 70,000 pounds. It is a heavy motorhome, 4,250 kilograms. You will need your C1 but it has got a great payload and plenty of space within it. If you want to know more about it, then I will put a link in the description below. I'd just like to say thank you to Broad Lane Leisure who've let us come and film here today. It's always appreciated. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.